When it comes to installing your standing seam metal roof, panel layout is really important for a few different reasons, including making flashings easier to accomplish, keeping your roof square. So that's what we're gonna talk about on today in the Metal Roofing Channel. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett, subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and every Wednesday. Well, if you follow the channel, you know that we are in the middle of a standing seam metal roof installation series. We are installing a roof on Adam Mazella's house. Now today we're gonna talk about how to lay out panels uh, on a metal roof. When you're starting, what that looks like, how you should lay out the panels uh, to help out with your flashings and as well to help out with keeping the roof square overall. You don't wanna put panels on the entire roof and then end up at the rake down at the end and find out that everything is off kilter. So today I have Jason from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department helping me out on today's video. So Jason, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So Jason, with your years of installation experience, talk to me about why panel layout is even important when it comes to metal roof installation. Uh, yes, panel layout is important because you'd like the last panel to be close to, if not exactly the same size as your first panel. And what about when it comes to, you know, pipe penetrations, flashings, is there any considerations there of why that would be important? On a small enough roof, yes, you can, you can measure out your roof from existing pipe penetrations uh, over to the rake to determine what your first panel length is, or width is going to be uh, as long as the roof size is, is small enough to accommodate that. You, we can get into huge commercial jobs where you're 200 foot long eave and 12 penetrations in there and it, it just becomes a uh, best guess scenario. Why don't we take a look at Adam's roof and you can talk me through the process of, of how you would uh, lay out panels when, when you're first starting a job. All right, so here's Adam's roof, only has a couple pipe penetrations. Now, we were able to lay out the panels on the, the front side to where the pipe fell in the middle of a panel instead of falling on a pipe seam because if that were to happen, talk to me a little bit about you know what kind of extra flashing you'd have to accomplish if a pipe fell directly on a seam. Okay, so at Sheffield Metals, we have a panel splice detail when pipe penetrations unfortunately fall in the rib. And you have to splice the panel, you have to put a flat sheet in there that the deck tight can attach to, and then the top panel above that. So everything's water lapped and, and tied down. There is a detail available on our website. Okay, great. All right, so when you start uh, your panel layout process, and let's say that you want to have a uniform look on the roof and you want your beginning and your ending panels to be the same width, how would you go about doing that? Okay, so to do that, you start off by calculating the overall length of your eave. And I convert that into inches. So let's just assume that it's uh, 28 feet 11 inches is your eave length. That equates to 347 inches. And then let's say we have an 18 inch panel. So I take the 347 inches and I divide that by 18, your, your panel width. And that equates out to 19.278. And that's how many panels it's gonna to take to get across there. So it's gonna take 19.278 panels, 20 panels, uh, and then probably one more because you're gonna have a, your first and last panel, you're gonna have drops from both of those panels. So what do you do with the 0.278? That's the tricky part, because then we've got to get that back into inches. And so that is 0.278 of an 18-inch panel. So I take 18 times 0.278, and I come up with 5.004. So your first and last panel now is being taken out of that decimal. So we're saying 5, in five inches, and then we divide that in half for your first and last panel. But a two and a, half pan, two and a half inch panel is too small to install to begin with. So you take another panel, divide it by half. So half of an 18 inch panel, again, you got the nine inches. And you add that to the two and a half inches. And you come up with a starting panel 
of 11 and a half inches. All right, so we figured out our panel layout and we know that we have an 11 and a half inch panel at the beginning and end of our roof run. So when we wanna install that first panel, how do we make sure that it is in square when we install it? So uh, we start getting into ge geometry and the Pythagorean theorem, right? Which is a triangle with a right angle triangle, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right, this isn't a math class, so we're gonna make it easy. The triangle is the three sides have to be a multiple of three, four, and five. So one side's a multiple of three, one side's a multiple of four, and the, measure, the distance between those two ends needs to be a multiple of five. So what that means is the length of our panel, let's say it's 12 feet long, and that works out well on the four foot line. So three times four is 12. So then we come over our eave, uh, three times three, and that's nine feet. So we got our three and our four, which is nine and 12. So three times five the, is 15. So, the diff, so when we measure from the top of the panel at 12 foot, we measure over nine feet across the eave, that should be a distance of 15 feet. And if that's right on, then we're square. If it's off, we're, we're leaning, we're tilting one way or the other out of, out of plumb. So once you figure out where the roof will actually be square and you go to install your panel, um, when, when you come across the roof, is there anything that you should keep in mind of maintaining that uh, square uh, line across the roof? Yes, I typically on a long enough roof, uh, once I have my a squared off panel, and I have a line established, I would measure almost every 10 feet and chalk a new line. And I would, as I'm installing panels, every three or four panels, I would re-measure against that line working across the roof. And then when you get to within, say, 15 to 10 feet from the, the rake, then you're starting to measure to the rake. And this can be where you don't necessarily need to run square anymore. Now we're kind of shifting pushing and prodding the panel, getting a little bit of play in that panel to square off with the opposite rake. Each panel has a little bit of play in it, so you can grow or shrink. You can grow the eave or you can grow the ridge to, to line out with the rake on the far side. So if you don't do this and you're, you're not making sure that it, it's square across the roof and you, you install all the panels, what are some problems that, can you, that you can run into when you come to the end of the roof? Well, you can, you can definitely be way out of whack um, and then where, where one panel would normally end on the rake, you could end up having two or three. Um, I, believe me, I've seen it uh, where you're three to six inches out of square by the time you're done. All right, so what about other types of roofs? Let's say like a hip roof. You know, what would you do when it comes to laying out panels and what are some considerations there? So hip roofs, there's basically two principles of thought there. Either the panel rib lines up with the, with the point of the hip or the center of the panel, or you're centering the, the, the peak of the hip to the center of the panel. I personally recommend centering the panel because then you get a little bit of play. If you're off by an inch, it, it, it just doesn't look, you have to really be dead on to line up a panel rib. Sure. It's done the same way. It's still measuring your eave, uh, dividing by your panel widths to figure out how many panels you have going across there. So is there a difference when it comes to deciding your panel layout when it comes to new construction or roofing on an existing building? The, the biggest factor when determining roof layout is going to be penetrations. And so you run into existing penetrations, of course, on a re-roof. So that can determine your panel. That can determine your panel layout if you can get close enough to a rake to measure that. Uh, otherwise, new construction. We always recommend that penetrations go in after the roof has been installed, uh, if time will allow. And time constraints aren't always there, but if time will allow, stub your pipes up to the roof. Let's install the roof, and then for just pennies on the dollar for a couple of elbows, 
you can move the, the pipe penetration to where it meets the center of the panel. All right, Jason. Well, thank you very much for the information. I really appreciate it. And if you have any more questions, please comment down below. Make sure you subscribe here to stay up to date on new videos, including the full standing seam metal roof installation project that we are doing right now. Thanks. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you again next time.